adenosine. The idea is to enhance the EGF and other growth factors at the hair follicles. But does it really hold up in real world scenarios? <laughs> It's Philippe from Alpha Mode and let's just dive right into it. Is adenosine really worth the hype and will it really regrow your hair? Should you even be incorporating into your routine and what about potential side effects? In this video we got 5 recent studies, user feedback and before and after results to give you the lowdown on adenosine and whether it is the right choice for you and your hair loss. So let's just start with the basics. Adenosine. Is it just overhyped or is it truly worth considering for your hair loss treatment? Adenosine is a natural compound found in the human cells. You might be familiar with the DNA bases like adenine. Well, adenosine is just closely related, acting as a vital signaling molecule. Unlike caffeine, which blocks adenosine receptors and stimulates our nervous system, adenosine has different roles in our body. But how does it actually work for hair loss? The mechanism behind adenosine's effectiveness against hair loss isn't entirely clear. However, there is an intriguing connection to minoxidil's action and how minoxidil work. Minoxidil promotes hair growth by activating the vascular endothelial growth factor VGEF and adenosine's receptor play a role in this process. By applying topical adenosine, the idea is to enhance the EGF and other growth factors at the hair follicles. But does it really hold up in real world scenarios? So before we start going into the studies with adenosine as a mediator for hair growth, I want to show where my thoughts of adenosine as a hair loss solution came to play. You see, I started going down the rabbit hole of adenosine since I saw in several studies how the effect of some of the pathways were the same as minoxidils. And if you've seen some of my videos, especially the one on oral minoxidil, you might recognize some of these pathways, especially the WNT slash beta pathway that minoxidil works by activating. In this study, we looked into how adenosine promotes hair growth on a molecular level. We found that adenosine kickstarts a pathway called WNT slash beta catenine by affecting the behavior of GSK3 beta in human dermal papillar cells. It also triggers signals to adenosine receptors, causing an increase in a molecule called CAMP inside the cells. This in turn ramps up the cell's energy metabolism through a CAMP related process and the activation of C CREB, mTOR and GSK3 beta are all important players in cell functions and all of those goes up as well. Moreover, genes associated with the beta cantonine role like axin 2 LEF1 and growth factors like BFGF, FGF7 and IGF1 showed increased activity. We found that adenosine pushes the WNT beta cantonine pathway through the adenosine receptor and GSK3 beta has a key role in sending signals from adenosine's receptors to the beta cantonine, possibly using a chain signals called GGS, CAMP, PKA and the mTOR receptors. So this study endorsed the statement that adenosine works on the same level as minoxidil does. And this might take us further into the studies of adenosine. So for now I want to turn our attention to some real world data. We got four recent studies on adenosine. The first one in a Japanese study involving 38 participants, adenosine lotion was compared to a placebo over six months. The adenosine group showed of course an improved hair density, more mature hairs and fewer villous hairs. You can take a look at these pictures up here and determine for yourself. Another study in Japan, this time with 104 men, compared twice daily adenosine lotion to a placebo. Dermatologists then evaluated the results on a six-point scale after six months. 80% of the adenosine-treated group showed clearly improvement or at least better, compared to only a 32% increase in the placebo group. 
As you probably can see for yourself in these pictures, patients treated with adenosine had a significant increase in hair density over the six months. Still staying in Japan, our fourth study named Topical Adenosine Increases Thick Hair Ratio in Japanese Men with Androgenic Alopecia. And I assume you can guess for yourself what they tested. Efficacy was evaluated by a dermatologist who then assessed the quality of the hair by calculating the percentages of vellus-like and thick hair among the vertex hair, as well as the hair density. So as you might already have guessed, getting the results evaluated by a dermatologist promotes the trust in this study. And furthermore, of course, it helps that the results, results were once again in favor of adenosine. Actually, the results were significantly superior, which in scientific terms means this is very reliable. Moving to Iran, a study compared adenosine to 5% minoxidil. While there were no significant differences in the efficacy, adenosine users reported a higher satisfaction. Side effects of topical adenosine are rare and often attributed to other formulation ingredients. So on paper, Adenosine seems to just be minoxidil without the side effects for now. So what is my overall conclusion on this? While the number of studies is limited, the evidence suggests that adenosine has anti-hair loss properties. The Japanese, the Japanese studies stand out for their robust design and before and after photo documentation. And adenosine is even making waves in the anti-aging cosmetic world for now. However, as a standalone product, it might not be a new miracle. In fact, based on the five studies we just have seen, I would not suggest that you add adenosine to your stack, honestly. It, is, it certainly has potential as a hair loss treatment, but I think adding another topical solution to the stack that is already going on up there just doesn't seem worth it. What I think we should see at Denison as is just as microneedling IU5841 and finasteride. It is an add-on drug to our hair loss treatment that will help us increase our pressure on the hair growth factors in our body. Getting your hair back is a lot like getting back in shape or something like that. It takes some training, some macronutrients, some micronutrients, some healthy habits, removal of unhealthy habits like smoking and so on and so on. And sometimes people also have bad genes for putting on weight and some will need medication for that. Just like some of us use as finasteride. So I think that adenosine should just be put in the same category as all those things we use to get in shape. It's an add-on, it's not a solution. For the part on how we can all get increased adenosine levels in our scalp. So I do in fact have one study left for you guys. And in this study, it shows that stuff like sugar and so on is going to reduce your adenosine levels while fats and proteins increase it. If you haven't seen my video on whether carbs can make you go bald faster, I suggest that you go and watch this video. Now, while I'm no promoter of the carnivore diet, nor am I a supporter of vegan diets, I find it very peculiar that this study on adenosine and studies on hair loss from food intake cross their paths on adenosine and carbohydrate intake. It might be nothing, it might be me getting paranoid about carbs, or there might actually be some kind of link to general health, sugar and Take body fat and hair loss that we really haven't addressed properly at this time. So if you want to increase adenosine in your scalp area and by that means fight off potential hair loss at the same rate as adding topical minoxidil, I suggest that you eliminate those sugary snacks that you might be getting through the day. I mean, what's the loss? You get more hair and you will probably get a slimmer waistline. In summary, if you are concerned about hair loss, Adenosine might be something you should consider. I don't suggest that you add it to some stack and add it topically on your scalp. But once again, we just see an important key role player in re-establishing your hair density and something like carbs is lowering that hormone in your body. So adenosine is a key player. Carbs and sugary drinks and stuff, snacks, so on, will lower this stuff. And as we just talked about in the previous video, getting in shape, belly fat and so on also hinders your hair regrowth. So I think we begin to see a pattern here. 
Now, if you tried using adenosine, please let me know down in the comments because I've seen some amazing results on that stuff and I was wondering if it's worth adding. But for now, I'm not gonna do it personally. I would love to hear from you guys and that's all for today. You know the drill. If you like this kind of comment, like and